So now we're actually going to look at a real experiment where the instrument was designed before we run the experiment anticipating uh, one-sided non-compliance. And we use this experiment uh, as an example to show the experiment design and the IV regression analysis. Okay. So the second example is called Recommending Teams Promotes Pro-Social Lending Evidence from Online Microfinance. Uh, this is an experiment designed and conducted by a group of researchers from the University of Michigan, the National University of Singapore, and Kiba.org. Um, so you should have access to this article. Um, in our homework assignment, the data is also coming from this particular data set. So this is a problem faced by microfinance institutions. Uh, Three billion people in the world subsist on two and a half dollars per day, adjusting for purchasing power parity. So in lots of developing countries, micro and small enterprises collectively are the largest employers. They provide jobs, they provide means of living for many people. But their growth is often stifled by a lack of access to credit or other financial services. So to resolve this problem, microfinance programs provide small loans and other financial services. The internet, in particular online peer-to-peer microlending, provides another method to pool the resources from ordinary people to help resolve the poverty problem. So the first online micro peer-to-peer -peer microfinance lending program started as Kiva.org um, by two Stanford graduates. So the idea of Kiva is that anybody can join Kiva online and lend as little as $25 to create opportunity for people around the world. An important part about this lending practice, unlike you know, the Prosper or Lending Club, is that this loan uh, earns zero interest for the lender. Um, so over the years, about 1.3 billion loans were funded through Kiva. And the loan uh, helped 3.2 million borrowers, primarily in developing countries, um, in more than 80 countries. And the loans were provided by 1.8 million lenders uh, across about 200 countries. So this is a way to leverage the willingness to help of ordinary people to help the small entrepreneurs in developing countries. So this is the lending page of Kiva. Um, what you see here, you know, at any given time, there are about 2,000 active requests from borrowers. Kiva faces a challenge, however. So um, what you see on the graph is the, the number of loans and the number of lenders on horizontal access making this many loans. So what you can see from this graph is that very few lenders made many loans, and many lenders made very few loans. Actually, one third of the users on Kiva had never made a loan. So the Kiva's problem at the time was, you know, how do you get people engaged? How do we increase lenders' participation? When Kiva first started, it caught a lot of press. So people came, make a loan, then they forget about Kiva. So their solution, which is a homegrown solution, is, is team competition. So Kiva, in 2008, in August 2008, started this organization called, you know, Lending Teams. So anybody can set up a team, and anyone can join any open team. And lots of these teams, so this is the leaderboard around the time of the experiment. What you can see is, you know, the top teams tend to be group identity-based teams. So let's zoom in. The top team had always been the Kiva Atheists, and the second largest team is the Kiva Christians. So these are um, teams based on people's religious identity, and they have a fair amount of competition uh, among the teams. So a natural question to ask, uh, it's also a very simple question, which is, you know, does joining a team increase lending? What you see here is the raw data 
um, from between 2006 to 2012. So that's six years worth of data. On the vertical axis is the number of loans per person per month. So on the horizontal axis, you have the month. Um, so the black dots are the people, the average number of loans of those who never joined a, a team, a lending team, whereas the light triangles on top are those who joined a team. So if you look at you know the end on the right hand side of the graph, you would say, well, it looks like you know people who belong to a team, the little triangles uh, are more active than those who don't belong to any team. So the triangle there seemed to be a gap between the triangle and the dots. The only trouble is um, if you if you have this logic is to look at the vertical line starting August two thousand and eight. So this vertical line uh, is when team started. But if you look towards the left of the vertical line, you will see that the triangles lie above the dots, the black dots, even before teams even existed. So this gives us some clue about selection, potentially selection bias, which is, you know, joining teams is an endogenous decision, probably. Those who were more active before teams even existed uh, are more likely to be in teams. So, so this is, you know, it's very much like the participation decision in the job training program that we talked about. So our hypothesis is uh, lenders will be more likely to join teams if we make good recommendations. At the time of the experiment, 82% of the Kiva users do not belong to any team. So, so the, let's go back to this diagram. If you do simple empirical analysis with OLS, you will see that the team dummy, the fact that someone belongs to a team, is hugely important. So the question is, how important is it? We know that because joining a team is endogenous, just simply running OLS probably give you a biased result, biased estimate. So this experiment is about ex ante, generate an instrument, and estimate the, uh, the effect of joining teams. How do we do that? So we uh, decided to use recommender systems. So we look at recommendations based on three algorithms, you know, location similarity, or loan history similarity or leaderboard position. So location similarity is when people live, a lender live close to a team of lenders. Loan history similarity basically means that they've made similar loans in the past. Leaderboard position captures status, which is, you know, the higher ranked teams have higher status in the, in the Kiva community. And so we decided to um, design a field experiment so Kiva imposed a set of um, selection criteria, which is the people should, should not have joined any team, that they have the location information in their profile so we can, can use it in our computation. And the last two is that they allow marketing emails, they set their pages public, and they have to have made at least two loans in the past six months, in, in the six months before the intervention. So this actually means that, you know, our uh, sample is more active than the population in general. So uh, we ended up with 69,845 users. So the experiment design is a three by two factorial design. So on one dimension, one factor varies the algorithm. How do we recommend teams? We recommend teams based on location similarity or long history similarity or leaderboard position. The other dimension is whether we actually explain how we come up with the recommendations. So one factor is with explanation, the other factor, the other value is no explanation when you control for the recommendation algorithm. What I want to point out is the control conditions. So we have two control conditions. One is the no contact condition. So this is a random sample that we don't even contact or we don't even touch. Okay. There's another condition, which is team exists condition. So this is a subset of our sample who receive an email without recommendation. So this is like our placebo effect. 
So this is essentially a method to, you know, anticipate that we will have one-sided non-compliance. In other words, some treated people might not actually, some people we intend to treat might not open their email. So what does the placebo look like? So this is the team exists email. So every email contains these four paragraphs. So the first two paragraphs is always, since you're such an awesome Kiva lender, we wanted to let you know about a fun feature of the Kiva experience, Kiva lending team. So if you click on the hyperlink, it will take you to the teams page. Um, and then the second paragraph explains what teams are. The last two paragraphs are check out some of the thousands of lending teams to find the right one for you. So again, if you click, it, it will take you to the, the Teams page. And the last paragraph says thank you. And so what does a treatment group look like? Um, a treatment email. So you will see that in this particular case, the first two paragraphs are exactly the same as the first two paragraphs in the uh, placebo email. And now in the middle, what's cut off is the last two paragraphs, which are also the same as those in the placebo email. But the middle part is the treatment. That's the ingredient. So we say, based on your past lending, people who have made similar loans enjoy being a part of these teams. So these are the three top teams based on, uh, on the algorithm for uh, lending history similarity. What about location similarity? Then we say, you know, if you are in one of the location similarity condition, we say other lenders who live near you enjoy being a part of these teams. What about lending history similarity? So this is what's in this email exactly. What if it's by popularity, social status? We say some of the most popular teams are, and we list the top three teams. So what we see here is a summary of the eight experimental conditions, so the six treatments and two control conditions. In other words, the no contact and the placebo conditions. We'll track what we're able to do is, so the intervention is sent out by emails. So Kiva helped us send out the emails. We'll look at how many emails were sent in each of the treatments and placebo conditions. Uh, how many emails were actually opened, how many people joined teams, and the last column is that they actually joined a recommended team. So if you look at the first column, each experimental condition, with the exception of the no contact condition, has about 8,000 lenders. So we send out 8,000 emails in each of these experimental conditions. This is called our intent to treat. In other words, we want to treat them. And the second column is the number of people who actually open their emails. So about a third of the people open their emails. Uh, most people actually did not. So this is, again, one-sided non-compliance. So the people who open their emails, we assume that they actually read it. Uh, these are the treated groups. So when you conduct a field experiment, you always want to differentiate between your intent to treat and the treated group. Among the treated group, the fourth column is the number of people who join teams, and the last column is the number of people who join uh, recommended teams. In the first two rows of the last column, it says NA not apply because, you know, we don't email those in the no contact condition. Even though we email those in the team exists condition, the placebo, they don't receive recommendations. So let's take a look at a graphical illustration of this uh, participation decision. So the left column is, the left panel is for all lenders. So that's our intent to treat. And the right part is lenders who actually opened our email. So this is the treater group. So the red bar is when they join the recommended teams and the green bar is they join other teams. Again, for the team exists condition, uh, this is our placebo. We did not recommend any team. So everybody who joined teams in that condition joined other teams by definition. So you only see a green bar. 
So that's the first result. And the statistical analysis basically confirms our impression from just eyeballing the data. So the treatment effect on joining teams is that every treatment except team exists did significantly better than the control condition. Location with explanation, uh, let's go back, which is on the right-hand side, the second bar, you know, the bar that goes out the most has the largest effect. Uh, among those who open teams, there are two treatments that did significantly better than the placebo. Remember, we want to actually compare the treatments with the placebo and not with the control. The location with explanation is the best. History with explanation is also significant when you run the regression. But if you correct for multiple hypothesis testing, uh, the only one effect is significant that survives the multiple testing correction, which is location with explanation. In other words, when you recommend teams from similar geographic locations, people are more likely to join that team. And you tell people that's why. That's why you recommend those teams. So this is our two-stage least square regression, IV regression. OK, so this is the main application of our IV uh, approach. In fact, in this case, we use both diff and diff and IV. OK, so we want to look at the main question is, do people who join teams lend more? So we wanted to estimate the effect of team membership on lending amount. So the diff and diff is created by looking at the window after intervention versus a comparable window before the intervention. So we did three different specifications. So the one day window, which is column two, the seven day window, column three, and the 30 day window, column four. So in the first stage, you know, the first column, which says IV first stage, we use our instrument, which is what we constructed in the experiment. It's exogenous, so it should not be correlated with the error term. So that's email. OK, whether you received an email from us or not. We look at this, and we, say, we see that email is a significant predictor on the likelihood of someone joining a team. So the three stars means it's significant at the 1% level. In other words, you know, the likelihood when you receive an email, that increases your likelihood of joining a team by half a percentage point. So that's the first stage. And we also, so remember, we want to test for inclusion restriction, which is the instrument that you created actually correlates with the endogenous variable joining teams. So this is called the inclusion restriction. How do you do that? You use the F statistics. It turns out in this case, it's highly significant. The F statistics is 23.55, which means that it's a good instrument. It's a strong instrument. In the second stage, we look at the effect of joining teams on lending amounts, actually on lending difference. So we could look at the one day effect, the seven day effect, and the 30 day effect. So the second, essentially what you interpret is in column two, the idea, the effect of joining teams on those who joined is about $300, you know, $298.56. So that's the effect. Increases lending by about $300. What about column three? In column three, you will see that joining a team has an effect of about 55.9 or 56 for seven, uh, per day for seven days. If you multiply it by seven, it's about $400. So the effect for a week, the one week effect, is an increase of $400. It turns out that over 30 days, if you look at the 30-day window, it's no longer significant. Okay, so, um, so now we'll look at the second stage. We know that the instrument has to satisfy the exclusion restriction, which is that the email, the instrument by itself, does not increase lending. 
How do we know that? It turns out that we have a companion experiment where we go to the forum, the Kiva team forum, and send out messages, which uh, is summarized by Kiva as an email. It turns out that email by itself does not increase lending. But for the second stage, you just have to argue or find supporting evidence to show that your instrument satisfies the exclusion restriction. So this is a visualization of the effect of team membership on lending amount. So the one-day window is about $300. That's the first red bar. And the seven-day window is about $400. What you see on the right-hand side is a teeny little green bar. And what is that? That's $25. That's the median lender's lifetime contribution. So the effect, or at least the short-term effect, of team joining is quite significant. Uh, it's large, economically large as well. So now let's go back to the nuts and bolts about IV. So what we haven't talked about is um, that you can use multiple instrumental variables at the same time. So what we show before in our two examples, each has only one. The second part about IV is that IV actually does not give you the average treatment effect. The IV method identified the average gains to the persons induced to change their, their, their behavior by a change of the instrument. So this is only for the subset of compliers. Okay. So in other words, the effect estimated is called the local average treatment effect and is often shortened as late. Um, and you have to be careful not to extrapolate it to the whole population. The third part, the third point, is you must account for the estimation error in the first stage when computing the standard errors in the second stage. So in this um, particular example, in the second stage, we're actually regressing the outcome, which is the difference in lending amounts on p hat, where p hat is um, what, what we obtain from the first stage. These numbers are estimated from a statistical program called STATA, which automatically combine the two stages and give you the right statistical error, uh, the, the right standard error. And if you're doing this on another statistical package, you have to make sure, and you can check manually, that uh, the uh, standard errors are estimated correctly in the second stage. How good are IV regressions? The bottom line is IV is only as good as the instruments on which it is based. So you have to check the two criteria. One is the inclusion restriction, OK, so about the first stage. So weak instrument just don't work as well. So this is a, a criterion that you can check objectively by using the F-test. So the second criteria is exclusion restriction, which says that the instrument only affects the outcome variable through its effect on participation. It's difficult to test this empirically. You have to argue or cite other empirical evidence. The exception is a case when you have more than one plausible instrument, you can see if they both give you the same answers. Um, and you can do that by using the Sargon test or the Wu Hausman test. Uh, this is very rare in the sense that it's not so easy to find a good, one good instrument, let, let alone multiple good instruments. So now let's summarize um, the application. So basically what we show um, in using this field experiment is that team recommendation emails significantly increase the likelihood that a lender joins a team compared to the control condition. And location with explanation has the largest effect. For those who join teams, the average lending amounts increase by about $400 in the seven-day window. So it's a fairly large effect. And this is a study that support group membership as an effective mechanism for promoting pro-social behavior. Um, the method used, uh, there are two lessons. One is the researchers anticipated that there will be one-sided non-compliance, that some people will simply not open their emails. How do we correct for that? 
uh, we constructed a placebo condition where lenders receive emails, but the email does not have recommendations or the treatments. Uh, the second part on the methodology front is to um, build an instrument ex ante into the experiment design. Uh, and the instrument is um, the recommendation email. So this is a lot easier than looking for instrument after you conduct this study. So for, for experiments, one way to think about it is encouragement or you know, randomized encouragement or random receiving of emails information interventions typically are good candidates for a good instrument. So there's a lot more about instrumental variables. I encourage you to read a lot um, because it is a very powerful method for causal inference and uh, to practice a lot by designing experiments and check if they're good instruments. Okay, so that concludes our fourth lecture. Thank you.